Week 8 is starting. We're 13 games on Monday. We're going to break them down. We're going to look at injuries. We're going to look at streaming options, if it's even possible. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and, well, he's out now. He got 40. And I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to PricePicks.com slash LockedOnNBA and use the code all lowercase LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. So I'm recording this one now. There are no games on Sunday, obviously. I would have liked to push this a little bit later, but I've got some life stuff that I need to do because, as you know, my balcony collapsed onto my car and I've got to go take my car out to the assessor for the second time so they can see the damage and figure out all this sort of stuff. Right, so there are going to be injury stuff, injury things that do happen in between here that aren't reflected. And as literally just as I'm recording this, three big injuries just dropped. Karis Levert out, Mitchell Robinson out, and Evan Mobley out, which wasn't the case when I was uh, setting this up to begin with. So that is the things that are going to happen. The NBA moves like this, and uh, we can't always have everything 100% up to date all the time. also realized I didn't do a Week 7 industry pickup um, uh, recap or you know, review. So let's have a look how everything went over at Industry Pickup and your boy undefeated. Another victory for me. Yes, I am absolutely flying. This is going to make the collapse down the stretch even worse, even more depressing when I don't win the title after winning every week for seven weeks so far. So where are we at? I beat Rhett Bauer 6-3 in a weird week, obviously with limited games. Um, you can see the other matchups there. Barutha beat Kingy 6-3. Uh, Drew Dinkmeyer beat Mitch Casey 6-2-1. I've got Drew this week. That's We're first and second. Big battle this week. Mike Barner and Raclean tied 4-4-1. Uh, Mike Catron beat Dan Tider 7-2. And Noah Rubin beat B-Dub 5-4. That's the standings on that. If we go and have a look at the scoring there for the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl, um, the Category League one. How did I, how did I go? I think, oh, I'm not sure how I went. I don't think I had a great week on this one. Obviously, a weird week right across the board, given the, the matchups. There we go. I lost 5-4 to new team, and Michael Jordan of baseball killed me 7-2. He's got a pretty strong team, I believe. He beat me 7-2 on that one in the FBI World Cup. How did I go on that one? I'm um, sort of sitting, I think, I think I'm think i fourth in the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl team. In the World Cup, I won 5-4. That's good. And in the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl Points League, I think I split the matchups 1-1 for the week, where... Um, yeah, because we have two matchups per week. So who did I play in that one? Um, I played Pound the Rock, and I beat them. And I lost to Luke at me. Luke at me, I'm the captain now, who is on top. Uh, so I think I'm fourth in that one as well. So we're going all right. So we're f- first in industry pickup. I think third in... I can actually double-check this. I'm third, I think, in... Locked on fantasy, basketball, bowl category. Some of you may not like this, but I know some of you people do ask to see this, so we might as well see where we're at. Where am I in this? Well, let's go to the main Red Claws division, which is the division I'm in, and check out the standings as they do this live. I'm third. There you go. Third in the Category League one in the World Cup. I don't know where I am because I don't know the name of my division, so I'll, I'll check that one later. But anyway, the points one, I am... That's the wrong standings. Why have it come up like that? Anyway... Maybe I'll pause this and get it sorted properly. I know you can see there I am fifth in the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Points League standing. So pretty happy with that one overall. The last one we look at is the World Cup. I'm eighth in that one. I need to pull my socks up in that one. Eighth. What am I? Like, oh, I'm I'm a little clear of six. I need to get ahead of fudge pushes there in seven. That's not looking as good, that one, um, over in the World Cup. In my Yahoo League, I started, I was on the bottom of that league for the first four weeks. I'm now up to fourth after a 5-4 victory as well. So my team's starting to come good, and we get Bradley Beal back this week. So I'm pretty happy uh, with how that's trending at the moment, heading up there. All right, so that is your league update section. Now we're going to go ahead and look ahead to what we need to look at. There are 13 games on. There is a lot to talk about. Let's talk about it. 
And let's start by giving some injury updates. As I said, there have some, been some injuries since I have um, since I did create this graphic. There have been some injury updates, and I'll just go through those injury updates now. Dan Gafford is questionable. Aaron Neesmith is questionable. Shamit is out. Jalen Smith is out. Jalen Brunson is playing. Mitchell Robinson is officially out. Um, Hartenstein will start there. Pat Connaughton is out for at least another week. Clay Thompson is questionable. DeAndre Hunter questionable. Mark Williams doubtful. So Nick Richards sh- straight up. Um, Trey Young's off the injury report. Evan Mobley is out. Karis Levert is out. And Marvin Bagley is now doubtful. Do we finally get Isaiah Stewart at center in this one? And that means that someone like Ivy or Asar Thompson can start. I, If this dickhead, Monty Williams, starts James Wiseman, I will lose my mind. There is no way. And I do not like Isaiah Stewart as a player. You know this. But he needs to start at center so we can get the wings and guards into the rotation. Oh my God, that has that has potential for pure chaos. But I, I they, there is no way. It has to be Ivy or Thompson that comes and starts, surely. Oh no, I, I am scared. Anyway, well, who is actually injured? Dylan Wright is out. The ball is out. Bam, Hero, and Highsmith are out of Miami. So all those streams remain active. In Orlando, it's the same stuff. Markel Fultz remains out. Wendell Carter remains out. Jalen Suggs not ruled out yet. Jaden McDaniels is out in Minnesota. Kyrie, Grant Williams, and Josh Green are out in Dallas. So a lot of opportunities open there, opening up there. Ja Morant remains out with uh, his back a week to go for the suspension. Marcus Smart remains out. Luke Kennard remains out. I'd say all of those guys have a chance to return next week. Um, ben Simmons and Lonnie Walker remain out for Brooklyn. And Jeremy Grant is also out. Just to recap again, Levert is also out. Mitchell Robinson is out. Evan Mobley is out. Pat Connaughton is out. Jalen Smith is out. And Landry Shaman is out. That has all popped up um, recently. It's all the recent news that we got in terms of injuries on that. In terms of questionables, I did have Jalen Smith as questionable. Obviously, he is now out. So Isaiah Jackson goes back into that role, maybe. And then Obi Toppin gets a boost too. I had Marvin Bagley as questionable. He is now doubtful. Uh, Joel Embiid is questionable, but he practiced. Landry Shamet was questionable, but he's out. Evan Mobley and Levert are both out. Jalen Suggs is questionable. If he is out, it's Gary Harris, but we don't really care about that one from a fantasy perspective. John Isaac is officially questionable. I did have Jalen Brunson as questionable, but he is playing. I had Mitchell Robinson as questionable, but he is out. So we look at Hartenstein there. Trey Young is off the injury report, so we're good to go. Alex Caruso is questionable and did not practice, so we know what that means. He probably doesn't play. We don't have a full update yet on Goose, but I am enlisting Anthony Edwards as questionable. I'm listing Larry Markinen as questionable as well. Dennis Smith is questionable. Daniel Tice is questionable. We don't have updates there. We do have updates on DeAndre Ayton and Malcolm Brogdon. Both of those guys are questionable. Uh, They're considered day-to-day, so you would think there's a chance that they play in the game on Monday. While Paddy Connaughton is not questionable anymore, he has been ruled out. That is done. That is dusted, and he is gone for at least another week. Today's episode is also brought to you by PrizePix. PrizePix is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's also the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Instead of you up against thousands of other players and their spreadsheets and algorithms and formulas and all that stuff, it's don't worry, worry about any of it, none of it. It's just you and player projections. They put a stat up, you say more or less. In fact, you pick the stats. So many different player options, so many different stat options they throw out there for multiple different sports. They've also got the special combos league they throw out there too, where it can be a combination of sports. So they might say LeBron threes and Travis Kelsey receptions. They set it at 10 and a half and you go less. Easy. Choose between two to six of those and you can win up to t- turn your 10 bucks into 250. That's 25 times. It is so easy. It is so fast and it is so fun. So go to pricepix.com slash locked on NBA and use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That is pricepix.com slash locked on NBA. The code is locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Pricepix is daily fantasy sports made easy. It's time to look at streams of the day. And as I said earlier, some things have changed. So we could throw some other names into this list, but I'm going to stay with 10-team league. We're looking at Malik Monk as a stream of the day. For 12s, I like Derek Jones, but we could very easily, very easily put Nick Richards in that mix. So I've got Dante Exum as the 14-team stream of the day, but I think Jones, as you'll see later, Jones, Exum, Richards are all 12-team league streamers. That's probably the most uh, consequential one, as well as Hartenstein, who becomes a 12-team streamer. Is the Richards doubtful tag, the Hart, uh, the Robinson out tag. The Mobley one doesn't impact too much, but those other ones do. And then Kevin Love is a 16-team streamer with the absence of Bam Adebayo. Um, Orlando Robinson's also in the mix of those other streams. There's so many good options for um, Wednesdays or for Monday's games. For points leagues, I'm looking for both Yahoo points and ESPN points. I'm looking at Caleb Martin, who should have an unfettered role in terms of getting 30 minutes plus as a starter with high 
Ty Smith with Bam and with Hero all sidelined. So what is on my radar? 13 games, let's go through it. Indiana and Detroit is the first one. I want to see Obi Toppin, who is playing really well at the moment. I don't fully believe that he will maintain this value long-term, but with Jalen Smith out, with Aaron Neesmith questionable, Toppin has a little bit of value at the moment. He's playing super well. His percentages are so, so high. Um, but let's see how they use him. Like, is he a 20-minute player? Or is he a 27-minute player? That is key. For the for the, um, uh, for the the Pistons, we're looking at Jaden Ivey. How do they use Jaden Ivey now, especially the Bagley is out or doubtful? Does Ivey move back in? Does Monty Williams hate his guts for whatever reason? Where does Asar Thompson fit? I don't know. In terms of streams, we're looking at Neesmith um, on the paces if he plays, of course. Otherwise, uh, if Toppin's available, and then Isaiah, Isaiah Jackson or Matherin. Uh, and Killian Hayes is a pretty good one for Detroit, but that could open up Ivy and Asar, depending on what des- decision they make in terms of starting. The next one is the Wizards and the Sixers. Well, it is, unfortunately, Jordan Poole. I don't want to watch it. I sort of just want to watch it from afar to see if this man can remove himself from the worst player in basketball conversation because he's been dreadful. It's been shit house. It doesn't look to get any better. And we are nearing drop territory. That's how bad it has been. And it's something you give a little bit of hope and then he plays like 28 minutes with 19 usage. And you go, what is the point of this? So we watch it again to see if anything changes to change our mind. For the Sixers, I am watching Kelly Oubre. I did slap him on the droppable list earlier today. I do, again, you don't have to drop him, but what is his role? Is it just a rib ramp up or is it just this is the role he has, a 26-minute bench role, which is not good enough for most category leagues? In terms of stream, guys, Bilal Kulabali for the Wizards is widely available and he's a good streamer. And then for the Sixers, it is probably Nico Batum as a good option there that is widely available to stream in. Miami and Charlotte is the next game that we take a look at. Uh, I do want to see how they utilize Josh Richardson, but that's really just a placeholder name to have a look at how they're going to use Richardson and Huckers and Caleb Martin and everybody, all uh, Duncan Robinson even, who all maintain 12-team value. Um, for the Hornets, PJ Washington's last few games have been pretty rough. There is a boost for him, I guess, here with Mark Williams out. So Nick Richards is in that, in that mix and should start, but PJ should get a little bit more. In terms of streams, we do really like Caleb Martin. And then Big Dick Nick is an elite stream option with Mark Williams sidelined. The next game, did you see Obi's face? Uh, yeah, I'm going to put it up because Obi's just popped into the office. So you can see his face there. There he is. Look at that, the big fella. He's back. He's decided he's going to sit on his little chair uh, during today's little bit of the show. He's just popped in. Um, Cleveland Orlando is the next game. Yes, Obi, I can see you. Cleveland and Orlando is the next game. Jarrett Allen has been somewhat disappointing, I think, this season. With no Evan Mobley, he's got to be able to step up. So let's see what he's able to do. And then for Orlando, it's Paulo Bunkero, who's taken big steps forward. No, I do believe they are real. But it's about finding the next step for him. Is it defensive stats? Is it improved consistent efficiency? They've lost a couple in a row, and they really need to get back on track. In terms of streams, maybe it's Isaac Okoro. You might get a few minutes from Craig Porter for deeper leagues with Mobley out, and George Niang and Dean Wade will get a little bit. Probably Wadey is more of a deeper league stream there. And then for the Magic, Goga Badadze was dominant last time out against Detroit, and there is still no Wendell Carter, so him and Mo Wagner are on the board. If Jalen Suggs is out, we can consider Gaz Harris as somewhat of a stream. The Raptors and the Knicks is the next game. I do want to see what is going on with OG Ananobi because he's been bad most of the season. The steals haven't been there. The efficiency is off. The usage hasn't jumped up. I still believe in OG quite a bit, and I still think he's a buy low. But at some point, it's got to come to fruition, yeah? Uh, and then for the Knicks, it's Hartenstein, who I you know, is going to start. Will they split the minutes with him and Jericho Sims, or will they make a mistake? We'll find out. But Hartenstein is a 12-team league guy. To I don't know how long Robinson's out, but let's try with Hartenstein, who could very easily do nothing, who could very easily get tibbed, but he is worth looking at here. In terms of streams, we've got Precious Achua, who was quite good last game, hasn't been all season, but he's an option. You could throw Gaz Trent in there too. And then for the Knicks, yeah, outside of Hartenstein, uh, DiVincenzo is a starter who's available everywhere. I don't love his significant upside here. I don't think it's that big, but it's at least streaming worthy in the lawsuit bowl. Denver and Atlanta. What is going on with Aaron Gordon? Is it the heel injury that's causing the problem? Has he just forgotten how to score and shoot? Uh, he's been dreadful for weeks now. He needs to turn this shit around. They actually reduced his minutes and played Peyton Watson over him last game, and I don't think that's a recurrent thing, but he's been bad for a while. For the Hawks, DeAndre Hunter, who actually I believe now has also, of course he has, popped up on the injury report with a questionable tag with quad tendon soreness. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. That, to me, suggests he won't play. But we want to... Because he had a really good game last time out, uh, and we'll see what happens. I forgot to also mention, Dan Gafford's now also popped up as injured. So, yeah, just things happening all over the place in terms of injury reports. 
Um, in terms of streams, Reggie Jackson, you could go Peyton Watson if you think they reduce Gordon again, but Reggie's probably the stream on Denver. Well, for Atlanta, it's relatively rough, man. Like, Wes Matthews? Like, even Trey Young missed last game and still no one popped up. Like, we guys, we look at it, Bogdanovich, Bay, and Hunter, but they're all rostered in the majority of leagues. Well, I hope they are anyway. They should be. Um, the Chicago Bulls and the Milwaukee Bucks. We're going to be looking at DeMar DeRozan. Josh is not washed. Shut up. Watch your games. Yes. There's just something off about him, isn't there? What's going on with his free throws? That's my concern. Because if DeMar DeRozan is not an 87% free throw player and he is an 80% guy, then he is nowhere near the top 50. Not even close. And that's what we want to watch because that has been a recurrent problem. He can put up all of his other numbers, but his best fantasy category is free throw percentage. And now it is not. And that means a big drop in value. So let's watch it. And then for the Bucks, Chris Middleton was playing 29, 30 minutes a night in the tournament. Was that a tournament thing? Do they go against health advice to bump it up? Do they push him back to 26? I'll be very intrigued to see how they use that. In terms of streams, Pat Williams just needs to be rostered everywhere. Even though he's probable, he needs to roster him. And Campaign is probably the Bucks guy if Leaky Beasley is um, uh, already rostered, which he probably should be given the absence still of Pat Connaughton. Minnesota and New Orleans is the next one. We don't know about Anthony Edwards. I don't think he's going to play, but I'm not sure at this stage. I want to watch the Wizard of Noz, Nas Reed, who's putting up some pretty decent usage. And if Edwards is out, Reed's value does rise because they just need somebody else to create shots. Reed is a guy that his upside is relatively limited because of the minutes, but he can still produce. And then for the Pelicans, I want to watch Zion Williamson because his last two games were honestly like fairly atrocious. He's fat. He's not moving explosively. He's deferring usage. He had a little stretch. He started the season horribly. Started a stretch and was flying. It was like top 12 for a two-week period over in two week in minus one rank. He was dominating. Putting up good usage, big assist, defensive numbers up, efficiency through the roof. And the last two games, he did nothing. Was that because he was in there chasing tail in Vegas? I don't know. Don't know what he was doing. But he was shit. I know that. So figure it out, big fella. See what you can do. For the streams, there is a little bit there for Minnesota. Maybe Kyle Anderson, maybe Troy Brown, maybe Nikhil Alexander-Walker, maybe Nas Reed. Depends who's available and depends if Edwards plays or not. And then for the Pelicans, it probably is Jose Alvarado. Just make sure that Jones and Murphy are not sitting on the waiver wire. I would go with Alvarado over Daniels and over Jordan Hawkins, who is uh, out of the rotation. Spurs and Rockets. Last game, the Spurs moved Zach Collins to the bench, so we want to see what Zach Collins' role is. Is he going to be strictly a backup to Wimby? Do they share the court for five minutes instead of 20 minutes? How does that all look and what does that mean for his value? And then Jabari Smith, who's got a role, plays his 31, 32 minutes for the Rockets, but never gets a shot. He's putting up pretty strong fantasy numbers, but that usage continues to be limited. So let's see how that changes, if it changes at all. In terms of streams, it probably is Jeremy Sohan or Trey Jones, which one of those guys is available. Probably Lean Jones at the moment, if they're going to give him the 28 like last game. And then for the Rockets, <clears throat> I am... I'm going to look at old mate Dylan Brooksy Brooks, who last couple of games have been better, and he's at least streamworthy. That's sort of where we sit with him. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. As the weather gets colder, it's actually cold here today as well, so maybe I need FanDuel's offers to keep me super, super hot. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's never been a better time to get in on the action. You can look at future bets on the NBA, NBA championship. Do you think that the Lakers' odds now that they've moved because they won the tournament, they should have? Or is now a good idea to fade the Lakers for the championship? All that's available. Parlays, sides for single games, totals, uh, money lines, player props. It's all available over at FanDuel. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and get ready to kick into the final two-thirds of the NBA season. FanDuel is also an official partner of the NFL. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. Let us bang through the rest of these games. That's what we need to do. So what's, we just did Spurs and Rockets. And so now the next one is the Dallas Mavericks and the Memphis Grizzlies. A lot happening here. No Kyrie, no Grant Williams, no Josh Green. So Derek Jones is going to be not only in a big minutes position, but a pretty sizable usage position. So we want to see how that gets handled. There's so many good stream options from Dallas here. On the Memphis side, Santi Aldama, I, I, I don't believe in him as a 12-team league player. His minutes are all over the place. His production is all over the place. He's coming off the bench behind David Roddy Piper. I, I don't see it with him, and I wouldn't roster him outside of streaming. 
For the Mavericks, I do look at Jones, but then there's Hardaway and there's Exum as well who all get boosts. Maybe even Jaden Hardy, probably not. But those other three guys, Jones, Exum, and Hardaway are good options. For the Grizzlies, maybe Xavier Tillman. He played better last game. Surely it's only a matter of time before he starts over Bismack Biyombo, but honestly, who knows? And if he goes back, if he gets the starting nod, Tillman, I would add him in 12s to see where it goes because Biyombo is floundering a little bit at the moment. The Jazz and the Thunder, I want to see Keontae George. He's probably got two more weeks for me. If he doesn't improve, then he's getting cut. And that, that is always team dependent. If you are rolling, like my industry pickup team has Keontae George. I'm undefeated. I'm clear of everybody. So I can actually afford to hold to wait to see if it turns around. But in my FBI World Cup team, I don't even know if I've got George there. But if I do, well, I can't. I need to move on. I need to get somebody else in. Because that league ends in the start of January. So I need to start to move on. And we get into that decision time with Keontae. For the Thunder, we're also at decision time with Josh Giddy because he's not doing anything. His minutes are cut. And that is a continual pattern. And I think after this one, if he plays 25 again, he's a 12-team cut. Keontae is still worth the stream if he's available, and you can use Lou Dort, who is widely available, rightly so, for Midwest Dylan Brooks. But you can stream him in. That is what his role should be in 12-team leagues. The next one is the Brooklyn Nets and the Sacramento Kings. Cam Thomas' last two games have been poor. To give Cam Thomas credit, he did get assists last game, but his efficiency was well down, and consequently, Jacques Vaughn brought his playing time down. That is something... We know what happened last season. Thomas scored 40 in a row, didn't pass the ball... Um, didn't defend, and Jacques Vaughn said, well, as soon as someone comes back, bro, you are not playing. So Vaughn has no problem if he's taking bad shots and not hitting them to bench him. No problem. With Simmons out, probably going to be less likely, especially Dennis Smith questionable too. But we need to watch Thomas's role. Also, Keegan Murray, who's been bad. He will improve, I'm guessing. But let's see what they have. Let's see what they do. I, I don't know what they do. In terms of streams, Royce O'Neal's on a real nice little heater at the moment. He's okay, but not a great one. And then the pencil Harrison Barnes, much like Dort, much like Brooks, guys that sometimes are over-rostered. Um, now they've been rightfully dropped, and now you can consider them as good stream targets. Portland and the Clippers is our next game. I want to watch Sterling Henderson. I'm giving him a little bit more grace than, grace than Keontae George because he's been out longer, but he just looks terrible. And he might become better in February or March. I'm, he's got a couple of weeks here until he's gone for me. And again, if you are struggling, move on. If you're in a 10-team league, move on. He might get better, but you might not be able to sustain it. For the Clippers, Zubat's played a ton of minutes last game. Daniel Tice is questionable. So if Tice is unavailable, Zubats is going to have a big role. His numbers have been a bit all over the place. Sometimes he plays 30, sometimes he plays 20, he played 42 last game. It's a bit all over the shop. In terms of streams, Matisse Thibault is there. But if Brogdon and Aiton play... How does he get enough playing time? I guess Grant being out does help him, but a really good defensive stats streamer. And then for the Clippers, Norman Powell is the option and he could let you down at any point or he could put up a big one at any point as well. Um, all right, let's look at let's look at some two for one. I think that's all the games. I believe that's all the games. Is that the last one? It is all the games. All right, let's look at some two for one stream action. These are the guys that play Monday, Tuesday. So if you do somehow have the ability to add somebody for Monday, and there are a number of names on this list, including the first four names on this list, that if you added them on Monday, you would start them, I think. And that's Derek Jones Jr., Tim Hardaway, and Dante Exum from Dallas, and Patrick Williams from Chicago. Now, I'm probably less certain about Exum being a start on a 12-team league on a Monday, but the others, I think, are going to be startable. And then they play again on Tuesday. So a really good start to your week. The other names there you can look at are Norman Powell and Harrison Barnes, who have the Monday, Tuesday back-to-back. But again, realistically, they probably won't be startable for you on Monday. So that's not likely going to be worth the ad in that scenario. But Jones, Hardaway, Exum, they probably are worth it. Now, the difference with those guys there is, is that you could add them and start them on Monday. But is the guy that you drop to get him in, like you're, what, what games played... And part of this is games played advantages. Do you get enough games played advantages or enough value improvement to get someone in like a Jones and play the Monday when that guy was already going to play Monday. That's the debate, right? I think Jones has some long-term three-week value here, so I'm okay with adding him. Exum, I'm not so sure about. Williams, I think, has longer-term value too, so I'd be okay to sacrifice a guy that plays Monday just to add him and get him in. If you want to get chunky, let's look at the Monday, the Friday section of this week and look at quality game days only. So not Monday. So how can we look ahead? Where does the value come in if we want to minimize our ads? We're looking at Phoenix. Eric Gordon has three. Grayson Allen has three, but Grayson Allen's questionable. Also, Kevin Durant did not practice for Phoenix, but Bradley Beal is going to return. So we still don't know how it all goes, but with three quality games in the next five days, Gordon and Allen are worth having for now. 
The Lakers also have three quality games, so Cam Reddish is on the board. Drew Eubanks and the Suns with three games. Pat Williams only has two quality games in the next three days, but he plays Monday, as we already mentioned. Good value there. And then Slam and Sammy Hauser for the Celtics has three quality games in the next five days, starting on Tuesday. There is a back-to-back in there. That's why Al Horford's not on their list, because he's probably going to sit one of them, which will boost Hauser in that scenario. And lastly, we do streaming numbers now. We go to the 10-team stream um, situation. Again, cascading down. So look in your league. These are the top sort of options we go to. We've got Malik Monk, Nick Richards, Derek Jones, Caleb Martin, Brandon Miller, 57% rostered, and Orlando Robinson. Didn't even talk about him, but Bam is out. He's probably going to be startable as well. A Just an absolute cornucopia of uh, stream value options available on Monday. The next bunch of guys, which are more 12-team guys, we've got Dante Exum, Kevin Love is even there, Killian Hayes, Gogo Badadze, Nico Batum, and Mo Wagner. As we again cascade down into the deeper guys, these are all 20% and under rostered. Number one is Neesmith if he plays. Then Joshy Richardson, Marvin Bagley. Well, we can scrap him out. He's out of there. Maybe it's Wiseman. God, I hope it isn't. Um, Xavier Tillman, Dante DiVincenzo, and Bilal Koulibaly. And then lastly, we do points league streams. We are going to uh, under 45% rostered here. Caleb Martin, Orlando Robinson, Derek Jones, Nick Richards, Dante Exum, and Keontae George. And whew, that is the end of the show. I didn't hit this earlier on, but don't forget to subscribe. Operation 70K. Hit that subscribe button over here on YouTube. Leave your comments down below as well. And on audio, go and check out the video and video. Go check out the audio. It's all great. Guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.